Hi, my name is Larry Donahue with Law for Small Business. I appreciate you tuning in. What we're going to talk about is asset protection, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. There's a lot of good videos out there from uh, other lawyers that focus on asset protection, and I think you should watch them. What this video is about is to kind of dispel some of the misinformation you see out there. And let me quickly get on my soapbox. I'm a licensed attorney. I had, I am an electrical engineer. I had five years of uh, education as electrical engineer. I had a, a minor in mathematics, a minor in economics, and I had to work my butt off. And then I had three years of legal education. And then I've been 27 years a lawyer. So I've had a lot of edu education, a lot of experience, and I gotta tell you, every day I get a call from somebody and they say, well, I spent 30 minutes researching on the phone, and then they proceed to lecture me on how things work. And, you know, frankly, I get it. You know, we all use the internet, we try to understand things and try and be better at it, and that makes sense. The problem is there's a lot of disinformation out there. And, and I gotta tell you, when it involves asset protection, if it's not a lawyer, you're looking at or a lawyer that is wrote what you're reading, ignore it. It's, it's pointless information, it really is. Um, and the reason I'm telling you this is because as a lawyer, we help clients not just with asset protection, but we have a very strong litigation group on the other side going after assets. So I know how the game is played. I know what the issues are. and. Uh, time and time again, you know, we will represent a business or a company that has, um, you know, lost substantial money or been harmed in some way, and we end up getting, um, going after people who thought their assets were protected and they didn't do a good job. So, here's what I want you to know. There's two issues with asset protection. First of all, there is you, okay, and you have assets and or a business. I'm going to call it an LLC. And that LLC could own, you know, property. It could own uh, bank accounts. It could own other businesses, uh, stock. It could own all kinds of things within your LLC. Now, you also do other things out in the world. So when we talk about asset protection, there's two issues. One is your company doesn't hurt somebody. So let's say we have an individual out here that gets harmed by your LLC. So now the individual is harmed, how do they get after you or your assets? The answer is the LLC is called a limited liability company. The intention is, is to act as a barrier between you and maybe your other holdings and this. So, if somebody gets harmed here, maybe you have enough insurance, maybe you have enough assets here that they will be happy, and or you'll be able to resolve whatever the liability is here. However, if you have a, only a little bit of assets and you cause a great harm to somebody, think for instance you have a partner, and the partner ends up running over a child, heaven forbid. Your LLC is liable, you may be liable, Hopefully you have an LLC. If you had a partnership without an LLC, you're liable personally. However, the big issue is, is how do they come up and get access to your other holdings, your other assets? And the answer is, they don't, unless they pierce the corporate veil. That is a legal theory, and it requires generally some egregious conduct or some sort of wrongdoing or otherwise justice 
demands it. So what is egregious conduct or wrongdoing? Commingling funds, not following corporate formalities, treating your company as an alter ego, purposely undercapitalizing your company so that it doesn't have enough money to take care of its liabilities and debts. That would be wrongdoing. And that's what's called piercing the corporate veil. So you want to treat this as a real company with its P&L, with its bank account and information, so that people cannot make a corporate veil, piercing the corporate veil argument to go up and through the corporate veil to go after you. So this is one. However, there's another option people misconstrue all the time, and that is you hear about things like uh, foreclosure, or you hear about um, um, a judgment lien. So what these are is different. Somebody out in the world gets hurt and they're coming after you. The question is, how do they get to your assets in your LLC? This is not piercing the corporate veil. This has nothing to do with how you run the LLC. This has to do with how the LLC is set up and a number of complicated laws and structures in your state. So that's where we care about foreclosure, judgment liens, and possibly trying to go after the assets inside of the LLC. And frankly, depending on the state you're in, there's not a heck of a lot you can do about it. So, so what would be some suggestions? One would be you have a parent holding company in Wyoming. Why Wyoming? Because Wyoming has passed what's called the Revised Uniform Limited Liability Company Act, R-U-L-L-C-A, that was specifically written to prevent or make it harder to do judgment liens and foreclosures on an LLC. Another suggestion would be multi-member. Finally, the third suggestion would be multiple LLCs to spread the risk. So, in summary, if you have a lot of assets in the LLC and you don't have a lot of assets, you're worried about people coming after the LLC through you because you hurt somebody, you care about foreclosure and judgment liens, you don't care about piercing the corporate veil, and you want to have a parent company that might own your operating companies, and you also want to spread your assets out amongst the various LLCs. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. If, however, you are somebody with substantial resources, you're trying to prevent your company from getting in trouble and jeopardizing your other assets, you don't care about this. You do care about piercing the corporate veil. And it doesn't matter where your company's located. Delaware, Wyoming, Florida, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you run the company and that you avoid egregious conduct, wrongdoing, and you don't do anything that somebody can say justice demands that they allow to pierce the corporate veil. Uh, that would include undercapitalizing the company. So though this is your information about asset protection. Thank you for watching. You can learn more by going to l4sb.com or we're happy to answer quick questions and uh, you can call us at 505-715-5700. Thank you.